In this video, we're going to uh, evaluate an expression involving sine and cosine that's going to need to use uh, the special triangles and some knowledge of radian measure. So here's what we're going to evaluate. This is the problem right here. We want to figure out what is the sine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 6 times the cosine of pi over 4 quantity squared. That's what we're trying to figure out. So the first thing we need to know is pi over 4 and pi over 6 and how they relate to these special triangles up here. So here I have the first special triangle which we call the 45, 45, 90 because those are the measures of the degrees in the triangle. And here we have the 30, 60, 90 and um, I've labeled these sides with their measures. Now you may have learned them in a different way. I'll write this down and then I'll erase it. But for example, like in the 45, 45, 90, I have the hypotenuse is 1. And if the hypotenuse is, whoa, that's ugly. Edit, undo. If the hypotenuse is 1, then the um, two legs are square root 2 over 2. And you can derive that using the Pythagorean theorem. But you may also know the 45, 45, 90 by making the legs 1. And then if you use the Pythagorean theorem, um, you come up with the hypotenuse as the square root of 2. So you could use that as well. Maybe I'll leave this here for a second, actually, while we figure out the sine of pi over 4. And I'll show you that either of these will produce the same value for sine of pi over 4 because they are similar. These two triangles are similar. This triangle right here is a, a little bit bigger than this one. This has a hypotenuse of square root of 2, which is about 1.4. This has a hypotenuse of 1. So this triangle's smaller, but they're similar because all of their angles are the same. So they're going to produce the same sine. All right, now the next thing that we need to have under our belt is the fact that 45 degrees equals pi over 4. If you don't know that, then you might look at this pi over 4 and not know what to do. So that's key. As a matter of fact, the three you really need to know is that uh, r, 30 degrees is pi over 6, 45 degrees is pi over 4, and 60 degrees is pi over 3, and these show up a lot. Um, this video is not really about how to derive those. Maybe we'll do those in, in a separate video. All right, so pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So first thing I need to figure out is the sine of 45 degrees. Well, let's use this black triangle right here to figure it out. So the sine of pi over 4, or 45 degrees, remember sine is the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, the side opposite is 1, and the hypotenuse is square root of 2. Now, usually we don't like to leave square roots in the denominator, so I'll rationalize this denominator by multiplying by square root 2 over square root 2. And what does that give me? It gives me the square root of 2 over the square root of 4, which is 2. All right, so the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. Now, what if I would have used this triangle up here to do the sine of pi over 4? All right, let's try it. So the sine of pi over 4 using this triangle and this 45 degrees or pi over 4 is opposite, which is square root 2 over 2, all over 1. Well, dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, right? The numerator divided by 1 is always just going to be the numerator, so you get square root 2 over 2 again. All right, the benefit of having the hypotenuse is 1 is when you're doing the sine and the cosine, you divide by the hypotenuse. So dividing by 1 is pretty easy. <laughs> That's the benefit of having 1 as the hypotenuse, as opposed to this over here, which then you have to rationalize your denominator. But, you know, whichever way you like, okay, you're going to get the same answer either way. All right, so let's continue on. Actually, let's do the cosine of pi over 4 over here. I think we can see pretty easily that the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be the same as the sine. Um, the cosine of pi over 4, let's just erase this, and I can just write cosine right in there. The cosine of pi over 4 is adjacent over a hypotenuse and the adjacent side and the opposite side are equal so opposite over hypotenuse or adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be the same answer and hopefully you've kind of figured out that the sine and the cosine in a 45 45 90 are going to be equal all right so that takes care of the pi over 4 part so let's get rid of that 
And now we need to figure out the cosine of pi over 6 and the sine of pi over 6. All right, so pi over 6 is 30 degrees. My 30 degree angle is up here in my triangle. So I'm, base, I'm going from this angle. So the side opposite, let's do sine of pi over 6, which is the same as the sine of 30 degrees. That is opposite over hypotenuse. So 1 half over 1, which is just 1 half. All right, so the sine of pi over 6 or the sine of 30 is a half. So we're going to multiply that by the cosine of pi over 4, square root 2 over 2. Now we got to figure out the cosine of pi over 6. So the cosine of pi over 6, or 30 degrees, is the side adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Again, dividing by 1, you know, doesn't really matter or doesn't change the answer. So it's the square root 3 over 2. So we're going to multiply that by square root 3 over 2. All right, now we have all our numbers. Now it's just a matter of arithmetic and order of operations and figuring, multiplying this out and simplifying it. Okay, so we'll do what's in the parentheses first. We've got to do the multiplication before the subtraction. So when I'm multiplying fractions, I multiply the numerators and the denominators. When multiplying radicals, you just multiply the two numbers under the radical. So square root 2 times square root 3 is square root 6. 2 times 2 is 4. All right, for these fractions over here, 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, and then we're still supposed to square this thing. All right, we can still simplify what's inside the parentheses by taking advantage of the common denominator we have and writing it like that. So we can simplify this further. We're going to square this out. So to square this out, uh, do I want to write it out twice? Sure, why not? Let's write it out twice. Okay, so what we need to do is square root 6 minus square root 2 over 4 times square root 6 minus square root 2 over 4. Now, to multiply the numerators, we have a binomial times a binomial, so we're going to need to FOIL that. All right, square root 6 times square root 6 is square root 36, which is just 6. Square root 6 times square root 2 is square root 12. So we have minus square root 12. All right, now we got to do square root 2 times square root 6 is minus square root 12 again. And lastly, we're going to do negative square root 2 times negative square root 2. That's going to be a positive square root 4, which is just 2. And in the denominator, we have 4 times 4, which is 16. All right, so the simplifying of this seems to be taking a few steps here. we got some more work to do. I'm going to go up here because I think I'm going to need the room. Now, these are like terms. So we can combine these like terms, and the 6 and the 2 are obviously like terms. So 6 plus 2 is 8. And if you think of these square roots of 12 as like x's, if you had minus x, minus x, it would be minus 2x. Same kind of a thing. So this is minus 2 square roots of 12 over 16. All right, well, we can keep going because 12 uh, has a perfect square as a factor. Um, we know that... The square root of 12, let me just write this over here, the square root of 12 is the same as the square root of 4 times 3. I can take the square root of 4, and that will come out as a 2, and then the 3 will be left inside the square root. All right, so this gives us 8 minus 2 times 2 square roots of 3, because 12 is 2 square roots of 3, all over 16. So I'll multiply uh, the 2's together, so that'll give me 8 minus 4 square roots of 3 over 16. Now I can simplify um, all these terms. I've got two terms in the numerator and one term in the denominator, and they all uh, have a factor of 4. So I can reduce all those by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so that leaves me 1 square root of 3. And 16 divided by 4 is 4 basically reducing your fraction, canceling that down. And that is the simplified answer. So the simplifying of all this square roots and foiling and simplifying your radical and reducing 
took about as many steps as just plugging in these uh, sine and cosine values up here. All right, well, I hope that helps.